want to lift up uh, Pastor Gary King as well for healing. We want to continue to pray for him. God will do a miracle, amen. And we want to pray for our vice president, I mean our president, our vice president, and this nation, amen, that God will help us. God will continue to give us favor here with man as well. That God will move upon the nation of Israel as well. Just contend for that. And let us lift up our pastor as well, Pastor Julio and his family. That God will bless them and will prosper them, amen. We'll continue to move upon their ministry here. And pray for this church. Lift up this service today. And God will just anoint this service. And uh, would uh, continue to fill us with his Holy Spirit, amen, as we go out there into the world and testify, amen, of our Lord and Savior. Amen. So we're going to go it up in, uh, in prayer right now. Lord, we thank you Lord, for your grace, Lord, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of salvation, O oh God, that you have given us, Lord, freely, Lord. That we receive, O oh God, your blood, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, we lift up these names, Lord, and family, Lord, that you would move, O oh God. Even you know, our family members, Lord, that you would save them just the way you did a miracle in us, Lord. That you would move by your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that you would intercede. Lord, and touch their hearts, oh God. Lord, we cry out to Lord for our leadership, Lord, that you would continue to anoint them, Lord, and give them power, Lord, and dominion. Lord, we pray for Pastor Gary King, Lord, that you would move, Lord. We cast out infirmity, oh God. Lord, we pray for this service as well, that you would continue to move, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Why don't you turn to one another and say hi? Hallelujah. Read with a holy kiss, and that's what the Bible says. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful evening. What a beautiful night it is. God is so good. We want to uh, just uh, remind you of a few announcements. Tomorrow we have a Bible study. Amen. At 7 p.m. We have one at the McBride's home and then one at the Valle's home. So you can go there. Be a blessing, amen. Join one, be a part of one, amen. Be blessed by one. It'll really bless you, amen. It'll bring strength to your life, bring wholeness and help, amen. They're always a good time being a part of a Bible study. And then Saturday, we will be having an outreach, amen. That is at 12 noon, so if you can make it. And then we will be having a concert that evening at 7 p.m. So we'll be having an uh, outreach at 12 and then we'll be having a concert at 7 p.m., so please come. We're going to have a visiting band and our own band's playing. It's going to be a good time. So this Saturday at 7 p.m., and then we will be back for our Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. and our Sunday evening service at 6.30 p.m. And Pastor Jesus Elia will be in town, so we're going to have him preach that Sunday night. Amen. He did a wonderful job last time with Pastor Jesus Elia from Mexico City. He's in town on vacation with his family. Amen. And so we'll have him preach Sunday night service. So just be mindful of that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I believe that is all the announcements. Oh, one more. Um, we want to do a kickball game. After I, after watching everybody at the picnic, I said our church needs exercise. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys did a wonderful job. The picnic was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for coming. It was a it was a great great time. It was a lot of fun, a lot of people, a lot of food, and so when it was very, very nice. Thank you for every to everybody for participating. I had a great, great time. Amen. Uh, three people got baptized. It was wonderful. It was awesome. And God is good. Hallelujah. And so, but we do want to have a kickball game on the 12th. Amen. It would be nice at 1 p.m. If you guys can join us, that would be awesome. We want to do it at the park right here at uh, Palm and the 805. Bring your kids, let them run around, have a good time. Amen. And adults, we can get some exercise. Hallelujah. And God will bless everybody. And if you don't want to play, come and be part of the cheering section. Amen. It'll be good. Hallelujah. So that's all the announcements. Amen. Ushers, why don't you come forward? Amen. Church, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for all that you do. Amen. You are very faithful in your giving, and we so appreciate that. And we are trying to raise $400 for, we want to build a drum enclosure kit. They're about $2,200 if you want to buy one. They get quite expensive. So we can build one for right around $400. And so I think that's a lot cheaper and a lot better. Amen. And so if you can give to that, amen, we will have that built, and it will be very nice. And then we can control the volume on the drums, amen. So if you want to give that, please just mark that on your envelope, amen. Michael, why don't you pray over the offering? 
Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy, God, at work in our lives here today. God, we thank you for this opportunity to bless your kingdom, God. Give us this mindset of the gospel of the good news, God, within our hearts and minds, upon our lips. And let us be God willing, God, to live, God, this life, God. Receive this, God, as we bring it unto you, God, and that you move upon it and multiply it for your name's sake, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Uh, and it's hard work, 
I mean, it's, it's just hard work. No matter what you do, it's just hard work. You get dirty. You, and the, the big part of it, though, is hustling. You know, you just gotta, just gotta get out there, and they want to see you move. You know, and 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 I mean, it was hard for me at first. You know, I was just coming back from a laid back job, and now to come into this job where they're like, you know, hey, you need to make some money, man. You know, time is money. There, I, the other job was just killing time because you know, at some point we have just time to kill. But you know, time is money, man. And you know, you gotta move quick. And you know, so we got hired. There's a two week period where you. Uh, where you just you're just uh you're training you know they, there's the first week they put us in a class for three days and uh, those three days we were, we were just they were just throwing information at us you know and most of it just went over the top of my head but they were throwing information and then the next two days they 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 finally take you to a job site and then then you start you start working you start actually performing what you learn and so I meant you know it's two days at the end of that week. The Friday, they they got rid of the the first two guys. You know, so it was nine of us that got hired. So they got rid of the first two guys. We they do group hires. So whoever's not, you know, whoever's obviously you're not learning it. You know, you just don't seem to actually get it. You know, it, it, I, I was a little bit slow. So, they, but I was understanding what we we're doing. I was actually getting stuff done. So they, you know, they kind of kept me through that first week. And then they thought they got rid of two guys. One of them they actually got rid of them early. Like the first day, this guy was just sleeping. Yeah, man. <laughs> and, but the, the other guy, you know, I was actually working with the other guy, you know, I explained to him like five times what, what this man that just didn't get it, got rid of him, kicked him out. And you know, the next week, you go back to the job site, uh, they, like, the, on Wednesday of that next week, they, I, you know, it's the end of the day, we're, we're turning in our tools to the guy, to the, the guy training us. And this guy, I see him, he's already gotten rid of two guys right there in front of me, you know, he's, as I'm coming to turn in my tool, he's already... They're already telling them, you know, this and that, you know, just you know, it's not good, it's not gonna work. And I'm like, man, is this guy gonna, you know, I, I thought I was doing good, you know, so, so, and this guy, I go up to him and I'm like, and, and I'm turning in my tools and he's, and he just looks at me, you know, he's like, man, he's like, Brian, he's like, this isn't gonna work out, man. You know, and, and I'm just like, nah, man, as soon as he says that, I just start thinking, what am I gonna tell this guy, you know? <laughs> so he's just telling me, you know, he's like, man, Brian, this is gonna work out, man, you know? just too slow man you know you just can't you know you're obviously understanding what's happening you know you i see that you do the work but it's just too slow man you know in this industry you gotta you gotta do the hustle and this and that and he's telling me this and and yeah he, he actually offered me he's like hey man you know you want to i mean you go with computers man and you know you could go to the design department and this and that and then when i tell him listen man you know this is what we're gonna do man no they're talking like that you know i just told him hey you know listen man i, I mean i understand what we're what we're doing here I, I I get the part that you know I get I get it we're we're doing stuff you know I I, I remember what we're doing but I just you know the, the whole quickness thing you know it comes with time ah, man you know just give me another shot and, and we'll be cool you know we're, I'll, I'll get I'll get faster as we go and uh, and he just looked at me and he's like all right man he's like yeah just you know just come back tomorrow we'll, we'll give it another shot you know so, so I come back the next day and and, and I and I and I start working and I. I started you know they just, they just want to see you move and, and get get quick you know I, I was just trying to do everything before I, before I was trying to do everything not not so uh, not so not so fast when I didn't mess up you know I don't like messing up and then anyways it's just the it's just the things kind of almost like uh, OCD and man you just don't want to mess but I started moving quicker you know and then guy guy noticed that it come Friday comes around and then he he at the end of the day where I'm just I'm turning in my equipment he's like he's like so how do you feel, man? He's, and I was like, well, I feel good. Man. I mean, what, what are you, what are you gonna say? I mean, what, are you, you know, what are you, what's up? And, and he's like, well, you know, welcome to the Simon's team, man. And, and amen, I, I made it. So God gave me favor, and I, and I made it. God uh, really helped me to move quicker, amen. He put a pep in my step, and now I'm still there. So I, and, and God that just, God just, uh, just gave me some favor with, uh, with John is his name, amen. John the, the guy. And so, so I, I, I so. We got, I told you, nine guys got hired, only five of us made it, and uh, the, through a boot camp, amen. <laughs> only five of us made it, and then two guys, two guys are actually, well, one of the guys is actually trying to leave the company now. We're two months in, one of the guys is trying to leave the company. The other guy, he's not really doing so well, amen. And that's three of us that were actually in the same team, but the other two guys were. So anyways, these guys, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of stumbling and, and, and and amen and, and 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 as I look as I look back as I look back I see I just see how God just just 
laid his hand on me then and there, you know, because, I mean, he could have just told me, hey, man, you know, kick rocks, bro, you're not, you're not really good, you know, and, and, and you know, you're like, no, I don't see it, I don't see it, man, you know, it's kind of what he's trying to tell me, but he kind of has some grace, I remember he was telling me that, and I was like, God, I have some grace here, <laughs> I have some grace, you know, I need some mercy here, just help me, and, and God really helped me, and God really gave him, put that in his heart, and, and he, he let me stay, and, and, and as I look back at him, I, I look back at that day, I'll see how God laid his hand on me, and, and he prospered me through that. You know, he, he, he brought me through with that. And now, it, he, he opened, I mean, he opened the door at the very beginning. I was talking to the pastor, and I was telling him the whole details, and he was like, yeah, that's God, you know. And I really believe this is God opening this door, because now, as I'm in there, I'm witnessing to people, and just really open people. Like, now it's just really, really open people that I'm witnessing to them, and, and I'm actually one well, my foreman that I'm working with right now. His name is Angel. Keep him, keep praying for him, amen. He's 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 really open to the gospel. I already invited him. He's saying, you know, he's like really interested. He he said eventually, man, I want to go, you know, because I want to get married in the church, you know. <laughs> he's, you know, so amen. So he's trying to, you know, he's, he actually has an open heart to it. And uh, if you have your Bibles, amen, we're gonna open up to uh, Joshua chapter four. And verse, starting in verse 1 through verse 7. Amen. You know, it's, it's just good to see. Uh, you know, I mean, before I was, you know, when I was at Walmart, I just wanted to get out of Walmart. And Fidel and I and Flavio prayed here Monday night. And, and God really opened the door to get, get hired at that, that other job that I had. And then now I see how God has brought me to this other job. To, amen. To to witness to new people. Amen. So uh, we're going to start reading in uh, verse 1 here in Joshua chapter 4, verse 1. So, and it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, take for yourselves 12 men from the people, one, one man from, from every tribe. And command them saying, take for yourselves 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan from the place where the priests Feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Excuse me. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. And, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Amen. So... Kind of right here, so what God is, is really trying to, I mean, what God is, part of what God is trying to say in this context here is that it is very important, amen, to keep in mind what God has done for you. Amen. It's very important to keep that just resonating in your mind, to just let that, you know, let that simmer, amen, just skid sizzling in there, you know, that what God has really, what God has done for you, amen, it just brings, I mean, in my understanding, it brings just, you know, uh, 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 being humble, it keeps you humble, amen, and, and, and just just keeps you grateful, amen. Don't look to the person next to you, amen. <laughs> just kind of bumped in the shoulder. So it just does something in you that you remember, you know, just, just and you know, God, you really brought me through this, you know, and, and, and you really did this for me. And you brought me where, from where I was at. And then it just keeps you, it keeps a grateful heart. Amen. And then and this text, which just highlighted for me, was what do these stones mean to you? Is what the children says your children will ask you. What do these stones mean to you? Amen. So I want to ask, what do these stones mean to us? You know, what, what do these stones mean to me? Amen. Do these stones mean, you know, just are these stones like tiny pebbles, you know, you're just picking them up? Well, you know, I wasn't really that bad, you know, I was I was just out there, you know, I, really, I didn't really drink. You know, you pick up a little pebble and you put it on there. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really do much, you know, I didn't really go out partying, you know, I was kind of, 
I mean, I lied here and there, you know, but you know, it just wasn't that. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm just saved, you know. I just got saved because you know, just turned my life to Jesus. And then, or, or I mean, or, or even if you weren't that bad of a person, are you gonna pick up those stones and say, you know, oh, you know, grab it and say, man, God, God, you really brought me out of this, uh, out of hell, Amen. Jesus, you went to hell and back for me? Amen. I, I mean, the, who, 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 the, the Bible says, you know, very unlikely will a person ride, die for an un unrighteous person, you know. And then the God, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And then are, are you going to pick up these stones? And then and are, are, you gonna, are you not even going to be able to pick them up? Amen. Or are you just going to pick up pebbles and then say, oh, God, you know, you just, I mean... I wasn't that bad, you know, I was just out there, you know, I mean, even, you know, I used to just smoke, you know, weed, I didn't really smoke crack, you know, that's, that's kind of like, at first I was kind of like looking at it like that, you know, I was just like, man, I mean, I smoke weed, but weed is legal, you know, so I'm not really, I wasn't really out there smoking crack, you know, but like my dad used to tell me, you know, wow, I didn't really, I didn't really teach you to smoke weed, and I would, I would tell him, well, it's the same as you would drink beer, you know, just, it's sin is sin, man, you know, just plain and simple, and then and it's the same thing, you know, but, but, but amen, are these going to be big stones or when you look back and you look at them, are you going to be big stones or are you just going to have a, a stack of pebbles, amen? Little, little, little bitty, bitty rocks. You know, so we, we you know, at TJ, I grew up in TJ, amen, for those who didn't know. I, I, I grew up in TJ. I used to, we used to play a lot. We used to play uh, soccer a lot in the dirt, you know, or whatever, you know, whatever you call it. We would play games all day long, just in the dirt, you know, and you'd be running around in the dirt. And, and uh, at some point, you know, there's little rocks and they would just get into your shoe. They find their way, they creep their way into the shoe, you know, and now you have a little, you're like, oh, dang, you know, you have got a little rock in my shoe. You know, and I'll take, you know, and you take off your shoe and, and look at the shoe and, and, and you like go like, you know, and, and the little pebbles right there, you know. And we'd be like, I'd be like, man, bro, I'd be like, look at this, man. I got a, I got a rock from La Rumorosa, bro. You know, like <laughs> you guys know where La Rumorosa is at. La Rumorosa is on your way to Mexicali. It's like big old like hills. Well, you can actually, when you go from here to Arizona or something, you take the A West. You see the same thing as big old rocks. You know, they're big old rocks. And then, then for those who don't know, that that's where you grow rocks. Amen. <laughs> and that's where they farm rocks. Amen. <laughs> and, this, and then we would and we would pick up the shoe and we'd be like, man, look at this, bro. This is a rock from La Rumorosa, man. You know, it's a huge old rock. Obviously, we were exaggerating. And uh, but but you know, man, but but that's that's you get the point. The point I'm trying to make is. When you look at when you look at your stones, when you look back and you check them out, are you gonna be like, man, this is just tiny little pebbles, you know, you, nah, whatever, you know? Or are you gonna look back and you say, man, these are some rumorosa stones, man. These are some big old rocks, you know? Or you know, this is and and maybe if, many of us can, you you can just fall into that mentality of the that uh that well I wasn't that bad, you know, I wasn't that I never really I never really did this and that. Or you know, or I mean, but but the point is, even I mean, many of us while we're still we're saved and we still need saving, amen. Still crazy, amen. A bunch of crazy folks, amen. Yes, amen. But 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 God is gracious, amen. And then and and I want to look back at the text and it says, uh, when they ask, when when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Are you gonna? What, what, what's gonna? What's you gonna be? What's your gonna be? What's gonna be your answer? Sorry, excuse me. What's gonna be your answer? It's gonna be, you know, well, you know, I'm just, well, I'm just saved, man. You know, I'm just, you know, when, when people ask you, you know, when people ask you, they ask you, hey, man, you know, what, what's what's up? You, what, 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 what do you do? You know, they would just, well, I'm saved, bro. You know, I'm just, I'm just go to church, man. You know, just, just Thursday nights, you know, just go to church, bro. You know, I go, go once, you know, and, and Sunday, man. You know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, you know, it's busy, man. Oh, really? What do you do on the, you know, on the weekends, right? You know, you go, and you, you drink or something? No, man, well, you know, I just, I just, no, I just, I just, we have this thing called outreach, bro, you know, and then <laughs> we go out there, bro, we have a concert, you know, just play music. Or are you, you going to look at them and, and say, and say, what do I, what, what do these, what do these stones mean to me, bro? What are these right here? That is a big old rocks that I used to carry around. I can't even carry them, bro. Because why? Because God brought me out of there. God brought me through. 
Now these stones, I look, you know, I can't even pick them up, man. God has rescued me from hell, from sin, from bondage. God shed his blood for me. Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. It's a beautiful thing when you turn your life to Jesus and you see back and you see the hand of God on your life. You see the hand and the grace and the mercy of God on your life because you didn't die before you received him. Amen. Many of us didn't even want Jesus. Amen. I didn't want anything to do Jesus. I mean, you, you have a witness over there in the back corner. His, his, her son was trying to bring me over to church, and I was like, well, and I was just too, I, honestly, I was too afraid to say no. I was like, man, I felt bad. I was like, man, dude, I, this guy, I didn't even want to see the guy no more when he told me, you know, I, I like that he told me that Jesus loved me, but I was like, man, this guy's going to come in here, bro, this, you know, just playing Christian music, bro, I was, you know, but, but God, I, I think, I look at that, I look back at that, and I'm like, thank God that he just laid his hand on me. And touch my life and touch my heart. Amen. That's what these stones mean to me. These aren't just little tiny pebbles that I look at my, you know, I just kick them out. And all these rocks I can't even pick up, man. I can't I have to call a, a tow truck, amen, to pick these up. And 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 and, and I want to look, you know, look back at the scripture. What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it was crossed over to the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. Amen. You were you look back and say, God split the Jordan for me. Amen. The Jordan River wasn't even, I mean, I, I don't think it was even, I mean, it was a river, you know. It wasn't that big of a thing. You could probably, I don't know. You, I don't know how. Anyways, God split that for me. Amen. And I walked through it. And people might say, well, this, it's not that bad. Well, I, God still did that for me. You know, he saved me. And that's and he rescued me from hell. Amen. And that's that's and and, and, and that's the that's the that's the beautiful thing about looking back at these stones and keeping that in mind. Amen. That God just did that for you. That God just rescued you from hell. Amen. Because that's what it is. I mean, it's not it's not, well, God saved me from smoking weed, God God took me out of crack. Both the same thing of a thief and a crackhead and a good person, the good good person that doesn't have Jesus, amen, both going to hell. Amen. When you die, if you, didn't, if you deny Jesus, it's the same thing as saying yes to hell. Amen. 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 And uh, I, I just want to share, I want to share something. I want to share a little bit of where I came from and uh, what, uh, what, what I've experienced in life. Amen. It's nothing huge. I mean, people have had it worse than me. Amen. I'm actually thankful for the life I've had up to now, 23 years. Amen. And I, that I can't complain, but... You know, I, I look back, I was thinking about it, look back, and we, me and my dad, I basically lived with my dad for most most of my life, you know, just either, either crossing back from forth and T, from TJ, and, uh, and, and, and or living here, but, um, so basically, basically, we went, we left to, my, me and my dad ended up here in San Diego, uh, crossing back and forth from TJ, uh, Back in the day, I was small. I was about ten years old, because of some decisions my dad and my mom made. You know, so we we ended up here in San Diego. Uh, at first, we were just crossing back and forth from TJ, you know, because he was trying to bring me to school. We're here, you know, we're just getting up early in the morning, three thirty, three a.m., and then crossing, you know, and it's just a hassle. That's just that's the worst thing. And we're you know we're just crossing, and then and then eventually. My dad ran into this uh, this older lady that he used to work with. You know, he, he would uh, he would uh, he, we would uh, we would stay at her at her house. She had a manufactured home, a mobile home, and we would stay there. You know, for well, at first it started off me staying there uh, for after I got off of school. My dad would pick me up, we'd leave the teacher, you know, and rinse and repeat. But uh, but then after a while, you know, the, the lady offered, hey, you know, why don't you just I have a room here? Why don't you just you know, stay here, and you know, just so your kid doesn't have to be coming back and forth. At first, you know, when, when it was my dad, when we would get off too late, she, he would, uh, he would, he would, he would, uh, he would accept that and be like, okay, we're gonna stay, you know, we'll just stay there. And then eventually, we just started, you know, she offered us to just stay there, just to kind of live there, you know, just uh, for throughout the week, and then go visit my mom on the weekends. So at that point, you know, I was, I wasn't even, we were, we were just. We were here, and then we would go to the weekends over there with my mom, and we would just kind of stay here. My dad would do errands for the lady because she was older, you know, to pay her back. And she was a good lady. She was letting us stay there basically for free. But the thing is, 
thing with that place is that it was a, it was one of those places where it was a, it was a 55 or older thing, you know. So you have to be older to be able to live there. So we're, we're you know, that after a while, the social the social workers caught up, you know, and, <laughs> and they're after us, you know, they're, they're, they're chasing us down, they're, you know, they're investigating us, and, and they're telling my, they're threatening my dad that they're gonna take him away because he doesn't have the resources to take care of me, you know, and, and my dad, you know. And anyways, we end up, we end up leaving that place from that older lady, and we, uh, and we go to, to this other place with this, uh, with this other lady that he used to work with, and uh, she let us stay actually in, in, a, in a little, what well, used to be a garage, you know. It used to be a garage, she, they turned it into a little room, but she was using it for as a storage room for the most part. And we're staying there, you know, and we're, and, I mean, we're, it, was a, it was another hassle. We're, we didn't, she was let, letting us stay there for kind of for free because my dad didn't really have a good job and he was, and he was, uh, he was struggling with money and he, she was, you know, whatever my dad could afford, he, she, she would, uh, take that from him and 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 we were we it was so i mean it was like it was that type of thing where you we didn't even want to get up in that night to go to the bathroom because you would have to go through this hallway and it was just loud you know you could hear the food you know we don't want to want to wake her up we're not even paying rent and you know just to wake her up in the middle of the night like that she had dogs they start barking so we're at this, at this point we're we're using the restroom inside this little room we're just going into into bottles you know and then, which, you know, I just throw them out in the morning. It's not really that, that, that much of a hygiene, you know, but and hey, man, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And I was little, and then going through middle school like this, you know, and, 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 and I would see the other kids, you know, and I'm just like, man, these guys, you know, they, they have a home and stuff, you know, and living over here with my dad in the, in the shed, you know. <laughs> and I, you know, and, and then after that, my dad, you know, my dad's, like I said, my dad's work was just slow. Slow. He didn't really have that much work, you know. He's, he's uh, at some point he's driving around the neighborhood, uh, he's doing something, driving around the neighborhood, driving back home, and he just sees this older gentleman, you know, on the side of the road, and and he uh, he offered he's working on his lawn or something on his house, and he offered my dad offers him some help. And he's like, hey, you know, do you mind helping me, helping you, you know? He's like, oh yeah, you know. And he helps him out, and he and my dad starts sharing, you know, what God. What, I mean, what, what he's uh, what, what what he's going through, you know, and how we're how we're living, and he's like, man, he's, and the and the the older gentleman tells him, well, you know what, man, I have something for you, you know, I just got, I have these renters that I don't really like, they're renting the studio I have, you know, and I'll, I'll I'll open that for you, you know, once I get get rid of them, you know, I don't really like them, really bad, and anyways, my dad's work starts picking up, you know, and and eventually we get we get that place, amen. God opened that door and, and, and we get that place and now we're living there, you know, and, and, and it was just a blessing for us, you know, from, from going from where we were living into having our own privacy, you know, and, and, and a bathroom. Amen. God bless bathrooms. Amen. We got a bathroom. And, you know, we're, we're, living, we're actually living in a, an all right place now, you know, and, 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 and you know, and I just see it's just a, a great blessing. And, and as, I, as I just, I was thinking about this, and as I look back at all of that, you know, I mean, I, for, to me, it's not that bad. You know, to me, it's like, now I look back at it and I'm like, well, it was bad, but, but then I really think about it and I was like, man, I really, I really have a, a home, you know, like a real home for a while. And, uh, and I mean, from going from, from having a home to like living in the, the, the conditions that we were living, we were kind of adding up, you know, it was kind of rough, but I look back at it and I see, and I just see God overshadowing my life, and I see the hand and the mercy and the and and the and the grace of God that He just overshadowed our life like that. That He put these people in our path, Amen. And then God just overshadowed our life. And then I don't I don't look back at it, and I and I don't take pity on it. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not like, oh, you know, you don't you don't know what I went through, you know, like, you don't know what I, how rough I had it, man. You know, and, 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 no, and then I look back at it, and I'm like. I learned something. I learned to be grateful. Amen. Amen. I learned to, 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 to be grateful for the things I have now and for what God has for me in the, in, in the future. Amen. And, and what God has for me now and how he brought me through all that. And I see God just laying his hand on us, you know, bringing us through all this, this, this whatever we were going through. And I, and I look back at it and, 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 I, and I know that God was with us. Amen. Because he had a destiny for us. Because he had a destiny 
for our for our lives and this destiny that we stepped in, amen. And now we're we're li we were living in this place, and that's how I got us. Uh, so I'm running out of voice here. <laughs> and I'm living in this place, and that's how I got this job at Walmart. I grew up at Marvista, got this job at Walmart. That guy comes in through that door, he witnesses to me, and I get saved, amen. God just had his hand over me through all this chaos. And I look back at these stones, and when people ask me, I'm like, God had this grace on me. Amen. Yeah. He, he not only he brought me through that, but he saved me from hell in the first yeah. place. He had this plan, this beautiful plan and destiny that I stepped into because he had his hand on me. Amen. And then stay with me right here. I got three more minutes. Amen. And God and, and, and I and I and I know that God is with us. Yes, Amen. He is. Because because he 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 had his he has his hand on us. Amen. He brought us to this point where we're here now. We're saved. Amen. 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 No matter what we who we were, no matter what you were doing. It's the, the point is, God had his hand on you, and that's the reason why we're here. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why I'm at that job right now, witnessing the people. That's why they're hearing the gospel. Amen. That's why I'm here right now, standing, talking to you guys. Amen. With this beautiful family of God. And the, 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 the part of the, this part of the... Uh, amen. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and uh, read uh, Joshua, Joshua, the same chapter, 4. Verse 19, amen, starting in verse 19. It says, Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, uh, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you, shall, then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed it over as the Lord your God did to, to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until he had crossed over. We had crossed over that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that it may that they that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. God brought them, brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea and through the wilderness and through the Jordan River. Amen. And he's telling them right there. You can't miss it. He's telling them right there. He's saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? He's saying, You shall look back. Amen. And you will see that God brought you through this Red Sea. Amen. And that God brought you through the, the Jordan River. And how Jesus shed his blood on the Calvary's cross. Amen. And how you were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And how he brought you through all your insanity or whatever you were going through. And the hand of God was upon your life. And he brought you to this point right now. Why? That all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord, amen, is mighty. Yes. That his grace, amen, endures forever. Amen. That they may know we have a Savior, amen, Jesus Christ. And what I see right here, it's, it's in my Bible, amen. I don't know what you see in your Bible. I see, Brian, my hand was upon you, amen. I brought you through that Red Sea. I split the sea for you so that your dad and you would walk through here. And that you would you would walk on dry land, amen. And not a dot of water would land on you, amen. And that you would come out into the wilderness and I would provide for you, amen. He put these people on front of us and he would provide for you. Why? Because I have a destiny for you. That's what the Bible is telling amen. me right Hallelujah. here. Because all the peoples of the earth, amen, shall know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, amen. That I have a Savior, that I look back at these stones and I see them and I'm like, God, your hand is mighty because I can't pick up those stones, but your hand can. Amen. Amen. God's hand can pick up, can only pick up those stones, and that's what I see when I look back at my stones. I see, gosh, man, God brought me through all this, and now I'm here. Amen. Now I'm here. I'm saved. I'm in my right mind. Well, partially in my right mind. Amen. Because I'm still out of my mind for the most part. But God is doing a wonderful work, and God has a destiny for me. Amen. And now I can tell all the peoples of the earth that God's hand is mighty. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then, uh, and, and turn in, if you look back at uh, in, into Exodus, uh, Moses tells the people, remember the day when she went out of Egypt, out of the Lord, 
out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of hand of the Lord brought you to this out of this place. And it says, No leavened bread shall be eaten. He's telling about the, the, the feast of the, the, the feast of the unleavened bread, and then and it says, And you shall and you shall tell your son in that day, saying, This is done because of what the Lord did for me. Amen. When I came up from Egypt, Amen. it shall be as a sign to you, to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes, it says, that the Lord's law may be in your mouth, for, the, for with a strong hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Amen. He says, testify, amen. Do it. Do it as a sign, amen, to the people, that the people may know that he brought you out of Egypt, that his hand, amen, brought you through. That his hand is mighty. Amen. It says, this is done because of what the Lord did for me. Nobody can take that from you. That's right. Amen. Only you know what God did for yes, you. Yes, amen. Only I know what God did for me. And ain't nobody going to tell me, oh, you were only smoking weed, bro. You know what? I have this friend, amen. He, was, you know, he lives right next door. I hope he can hear me. And he's yeah. telling me, he's telling he literally lives, lives in the apartments. And he's telling me, he's like, I tell him, hey man, he's like, I, you know, I, I told him I got saved, bro. You know, I did. I turned my life to Jesus. You remember, I told him I was dating this girl, and and, and it just went wrong. Man, I was depressed, and God just brought me through. Man, he put this guy in front of me, and he testified to me, and he told me that Jesus loved me. And he's like, oh no, man, you know, he's like, no, nah, bro, he's like, you just stopped hanging out with us, man. That's why you went like this. You went crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm like, no, oh, bro, Jesus is real. He touched my heart. He touched my life. And I know this, man. I know that he's coming back, and I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm telling you, nobody can take that away from me. That's right. I mean, I know what God did for me, what God brought me through. Amen. And, 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 and as well, I just want to say that only you know, amen, what God has done for you and what your stones are. Man, if you look back at your stones, you know, what do you see? You, you look, I mean, it's, it's, it's all from what you see. Because you can see a big old stone, you know, and you can act like as if it's a pebble, you know. You see something big or something, even if it's a little, but you can act like if it's something big. But not act, but actually know that Jesus saved you from hell, even when you weren't smoking or drinking, as if you were. Amen. Because that's what happens. I mean, I was doing whatever, you know, but the same thing, he did the same thing for me as he did for, for Pastor Julio, and as he did for you. And for you, he brought us out of hell. Amen. And that's what is plain and simple. That's the gospel right there of Jesus Christ. That he saved us. Amen. That he went to the cross for that thief. That he went to the cross for that murderer. That he went to the cross for me. That I was, you know, everybody used to look at me and they were like, man, he's a, he's a good kid. You know, I used to hear that a lot. <laughs> and I was like, man, these people are full. I'm a bad person. You know, they didn't know what insanity I was going, I was doing. But, but God knew and he had a purpose for my plan amen and he redeemed me by his blood amen, amen. every head bowed amen every high close
close it right in time. Amen. For you to make it through. Not a single drop of water on your hair. Not a single drop of water on your on, on you. Amen. On your on whoever you your family, amen. But why? Because God had a calling for you. God had a purpose and a destiny for you here. Amen. That's what happened to me. God brought me to this place. Where I turned my life to Jesus by his mighty hand, he brought me there. I could have been dead. I could have been doing anything else. But that Saturday night, that I heard that Jesus loved me, I turned my life to Jesus. Amen. And if you're here and if you're not saved, amen, or backslidden, you can raise your hand and get your heart right. And say, God, I need you. I need you to set these stones with me right here and now. So that I may look back and I can tell all the peoples of the earth, amen. The hand of the Lord was with me. That the hand of God had brought me through. Amen, church. I want to open these altars. And uh, take the time to contend, to pray, to lay a hold of God. That He could remind you, even if you're forgotten now, that He could remind you, amen, what He's done for you. That He could remind you, amen, that the hand of God was with you from the very beginning. And that he is here with you now, amen. That he brought you to this place and this purpose. And this, this, this place, amen. This time. That you may have a purpose, amen, and a destiny. To let all the peoples of the earth, amen. Your sons, your daughters, your co-workers, anybody, anybody. That the hand of the Lord is mighty, amen. And we're going to open up these altars and sing the song.
que yo estoy contigo, que mi pueblo dice el Señor, tiene victoria, dice el Señor, porque voy yo delante de ti, dice el Señor. Esfuérzate, hijo mío, porque he aquí, dice el Señor, que yo estoy contigo. Anybody want to get filled with the Holy Spirit, amen? Anybody who's not filled and you just want to get filled, amen? And we'll, we'll pray for you, amen? Because that's what we need. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to, to open our eyes, amen? So that we may testify and tell the people of the earth that the hand of the Lord is mighty, amen? So anybody who wants to get filled with the Holy Spirit, amen? Anybody else? Lift up your hands, amen. We'll just pray for her. Oh, dear God, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, God, take it from the Lord. Oh, God, take it from the Lord. Sikhi robo bo santa raba bachi. Ishkande robo bo sikhi raba bachi. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We glorify.